want to talk about the tibia? Fine, well, we, we can talk about the tibia. I've got a fibula because these two articulate. So what we'll do is we'll look at the fibula, work out where it is. I reckon you know where it is. Um, what it articulates with, and we'll look at the lumpy bumpy bits on it, and there might be a vague nod to some muscles that attach to the lumpy bumpy bits, right? So it's a left one or a right one? The left one. Okay, I might have to stand you on a table so we can see your legs. Well, we'll try and do it in under four hours, should we? Where is it? Well, of course, it's here. All right, let's, if this is a, let's, 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 keep, let's keep the size the same to keep the confusion down to a, to a minimum, right? You could be all right up here. You're very expensive. I don't want you to fall off. All right, can we see you there? Ooh. All right, so hey, this works. So um, here's the tibia, here's the knee, here's the ankle. The tibia is here, and the fibula bone is there. So you can you can palpate your your tibia. It's it's your shin bone, which shows you how superficial it is, how subcutaneous it is you can feel there are like, you've got this this ridge here if you look at the cross section of the bone here it's actually triangular and what you're feeling is this is the point of the triangle as your shin and there is muscle to either side but you can feel see i'm doing it I'm, this is a well this is a left one you can feel muscle on either side of that shin bone. Um, so the other thing to feel, you can feel the tibia. This is lateral for me. The other thing you can feel up here, so there's the knee, there's the patella, is laterally here. You've got the head of the fibula. Now this is my right leg. Here's the left leg here, look. So this is the, this is what we were palpating, the anterior part of the tibia here. So you can imagine then we've got these nice flat surfaces for muscles to attach to, which is why we've got this triangular shape. Um, and then here's the fibula laterally, uh, and there's the head of the fibula there. So we've got an articula articulation between the tibia and the fibula here, and at the distal end, we've got an articulation with the, the femur here at the knee, and we've talked about the bones and ligaments of the knee joint. And then we've got another articulation down here with the ankle. So we need to consider each of those and the shapes of the bone and how they, how they work to do those things, right? Um, but the big thing here is, the big thing here is that the tibia is the big thing. So you can see that the tibia it's actually the second largest bone in the body. It's a really, really big bone. And the reason is because it's transferring all of your weight along its length. So the tibia is the big bone. The tibia is carrying the load between the foot and the knee and the rest of the body. Whereas the fibula is a little weedy, foot, little weedy bone sitting on the side that um, is more of an attachment for muscles and that sort of thing and kind of a, a remnant of... Uh, of the way in which we're organised. Anyway, um, tibia. There was a Greek instrument called a tib. Something was it called a tibia or something like a tibia? It was like a flute, you know, like a pipe, like a recorder. If you were of my age and uh, remember primary school, but you know, it's like a wind instrument or a, a reed instrument. That's what a, a tibia is. So that's what the tibia is named after. The fibula is named after the word for pin. Uh, Greek word for pin, Latin word for pin. They are um, fibula and peroneal. You know, so, so anyway, we're not talking about the fibula, are we? Tibia, right? Stay on, stay on topic. Let's start at the proximal end, and we'll work our way distally. So remember, this is a left. This is a left tibia, right? So this is lateral, this is medial. We've got uh, two condyles. We have a lateral condyle and a medial condyle. Um, and in between the two, we've got a couple of intercondylar tubercles, a lateral and medial intercondylar tubercles. And together they form the intercondylar eminence. So the intercondylar eminence then is, a, is like a ridge between the two condyles, the purpose of which is to lock into the um, 
we've, we've done, like I say, we've done the knee joint, we've also done the proximal femur if you want to look at those, but the, 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 uh, the femur, the femur, the femur has also got two condyles and it's got uh, a groove, an intercondylar fossa within it, so, so these intercondylar tubercles, this intercondylar eminence is going to, you know, fit with the, the femur. And what we see about these two uh, tibial condyles is that it's forming a, a pretty flat surface. I mean, this is just the bone. Imagine it covered in articular cartilage as well. And that's why this gets called the tibial plateau. It's like, a, you know, it's a plateau. It's a flat thing that the, the femur can then sit on and roll against. Most obvious features here are this lumpy bit here, which yes, you can palpate on yourself there. This is the tibial tuberosity. So the tibial tuberosity is where the patella, um, the patella tendon or patella ligament runs to. So quadriceps femoris crosses the knee, runs through the patella and inserts at the tibial tuberosity. So this is a very prominent bony lump anteriorly just distal to the condyles because of course that's a really really big muscle so it's a big attachment site and look it's at the it's at the top of that just at the top of that triangle top of that ridge there um by the way condyles condyle means knuckle because it is it's like a knuckle isn't it but it looks like a knuckle so that's literally what a con or a condyle is now on the an interesting thing for me as a as a runner is a Gurdy tubercle or Gurdy's tubercle, which is on the this it's on the lateral side and it's on like the anterolateral part of the lateral condyle. So it also gets called very unimaginatively the anterolateral tibial tubercle. Uh, also known as Gurdy's tubercle. The reason that's interesting to me as a runner is because that's where the iliotibial tract attaches. Oh, can we see that on here? Um, so uh, the, 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 the leg is covered with a stocking of fascia, the fascia lata. It has a thickening here laterally, which has remained on this model. The rest of the fascia has been taken away. And this is the iliotibial band or the iliotibial tract or your ITB. Um, it does a number of things, but one of the things it does is it helps stabilize the, the knee joint. And look, it runs laterally to the knee. And you can see, look, okay, so uh, there's the patella, there's the um, tibial tuberosity, um, here's the, the bare subcutaneous tibia here, and here's lateral. Oh, that's handy, this is the left one as well. Um, so the the head of the fibula is there, and look, these fibres are just running to this point here, just a little bit anterior to where we would find the head of the fibula on the, that anterolateral part of the, of, of the tibial condyle there. So with runners, it, with runners, you make everything like tight and short every now and then, everything gets painful, and this, if this gets tight, it pulls on the knee too much, gives you a bit of knee pain, so you get your foam roller on it and try and sort it out. Anyway, so that's something I like. Um, so tibial tuberosity, Gurdy's tubercle, and if we, um, if we roll around posteriorly, we can see, can you see the soleil line here? There's, there's a ridge here, and it's kind of twisting around. And that soleal line indicates where soleus is going to attach uh, and bits of uh, tibialis posterior and flexor digitorum longus, which are in the posterior. Uh, these are all muscles in here, right? So if we take off, oh, I've got to take everything off. You know, I've done the muscle somewhere else. Go and look at that one. Gastric anemias, take that off. Underneath there is soleus. So you can see soleus and then tibialis posterior and the other guys. Do you see how my videos end up being really, really long? Because there's just so much to talk about. So if I stick the um, fibula back on, so you can see lateral versus medial, if we spin this all around, you can see that that soleil line uh, starts laterally 
close to the fibula head and then runs medially around here. So that's that curvy bit we're talking about. Um, and while we're on the posterior proximal tibia, um, I can see, so this is the medial side here, lateral medial. I can see there's a little, little depression there. We've got the two hamstrings on the medial side, semimembranosus and semitendinosus, <coughs> are gonna come in to the tibia here. Semimembranosus is the deeper one. So there's this, this little shape here is formed by the attachment of semimembranosus uh, to the tibia there. That's its site of insertion. Way more detail than anybody knows, needs to know, or cares about. All right, and um, what is useful? Well, here's the, the lateral condyle. Here's the fibula attaching to it. So can you see that on the, on the, on the lateral condyle of the tibia on the posterior part we've got this facet here for the fibula to attach to. Now the fibula and the tibia are attached at a number of points. There's this, this would be the proximal tibio-fibula uh, joint um, and there's also the distal one down there and then they're joined by um, an interosseous membrane, like a thick fibrous membrane linking the two bones along their entire length with a hole at the top and a hole at the bottom for a couple of uh, structures to pass through. Now, these two bones are not supposed to articulate around each other. They're supposed to be fixed in place. Bear in mind that this proximal joint is um, a synovial joint. It's a synovial uh, plane joint. So the two bones could potentially slide over one another. So it's an articular joint with articular cartilage, a synovial capsule, proper synovial joint, right? Um, it is reinforced anteriorly and posteriorly by uh, ligaments. So the ligaments, I guess, hold it in place and prevent movement. But because that joint exists, because it's an articular cartilage, um, you can imagine that disease is affecting articular cartilages could affect this joint here. And of course, so with enough trauma, you could separate that joint as well. So be mindful of that. Um, so I think it just you know, gets called like a, it's a facet for the fibular head here on the lateral condyle of the tibia proximally. That's about it for the proximal tibia. And as I said, as we work our way down, it's thickest uh, proximally and gets thinner distally or inferiorly. It's a smaller bone down here. It has a triangular cross section with this sharpish leading edge, giving nice flat surfaces for muscle attachments. And then as we run down distally, mostly what we're getting is this, is this distal shape here. The, the distal tibiofibular ligament at this end is a, a syndesmosis, it's a fibrous joint. It's not a synovial joint, an articular joint. It's, a, it's very much a fixed joint. You know, a, um, the sutures between the bones of the skull are also fibrous joints. These, you know, these are joints that are designed or intended not to move. And when we get down to the ankle, that's really important because we see that the fibula and the tibia are working together to form this this uh, socket shape for the talus bone to form the hinge joint at the ankle. So this is a syndesmosis, a fibrous joint, a tough joint um, that should have pretty much no movement at all. That's the um, distal tibiofibula joint. And the syndesmosis then, um, since syndesmosis, the um, interosseous membrane running between the tibia and the fibula down here is actually going to separate the leg into an anterior and a posterior compartment. Right? That's what we see uh, here. So we've got all these muscles in the you know, anterior to the, to the tibia and we've got all of these muscles posterior to the tibia. They're in two separate compartments with essentially separate blood supplies and separate nervous innervation. Uh, very helpful to medical students who are trying to remember where things are and where things go and what they do, right? You know, all the muscles of the anterior compartment, da -da. all the muscles of the posterior compartment, da -da. You know, they're similar functionally. And Anyway, going off topic again. All right, so what have we got at the distal tibia then? Well, we've got the fibular notch on one side. So that is the, the shape here that's receiving the distal fibula. 
Um, there are, of course, tibio fibular ligaments tying all that together as well, but that's the fibular notch. And then the big thing is we've got the medial malleolus. And the medial malleolus, again, you can palpate on your own ankle, right? You, this is what your ankle feels like, the big lumpy bits on your ankle, the bony bits of your ankle. The medial malleolus is your tibia and the lateral malleolus is your fibula. So those are the bony bits that you can feel of your ankle. Um, if we look posteriorly, there's the medial malleolus. Uh, it tends to have, um, it's got a bit of one, has a groove in it. And that's the groove for the tendon of tibialis posterior hoiking around there. Um, um, the tibia medial malleolus hoiking tibialis posterior is hooking around here. So there's often a little bit of a groove in the bone posterior to the medial malleolus, which is nice, isn't it? Got loads of cool stuff going around there. All right. So the medial malleolus then is, you can see you've got this large, flat, articular surface. This is articulating with the talus, right? So this is again a synovial joint, a proper synovial joint with articular cartilage covering and what have you. This is the, the hinge joint of your ankle. The medial malleolus is then bounding the medial side and the lateral malleolus of the fibula is bounding the lateral side. And it, forming the shape of that joint together, but it's the tibia that has the large flat articular surface because it's the tibia that's taking the weight through the ankle, passing it up to the knee, up the thigh, up the hip, and it's taking the weight of your body onto your foot, right? Um, and uh, uh, that's it, right? That, that, is, that is the tibia. Those are the bits of the tibia. There you go. How's that? The, uh, the anatomy of the shin bone. Um, but if you write shin bone in the exam, you are not going to get a mark. Tibia! Um, Alright, see you guys next time. <laughs>